Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to make my comments as somebody who represents an area in Northern California that measured by per capita or uh, geography has the highest uh, in areas of hazardous materials. We have five refineries in, in between the county I represent and the neighboring one across the water in Sassoon Bay. And having been um, on regulatory boards at the local, regional, and state level, I think one of the things I get from this meeting is is both an opportunity to celebrate the progress we've made, but also a cautionary tale that we get continue to get it right. So um, first, Mr. Tolman, you mentioned human factors and in, in so many industries, the importance of human factors and in safeties of culture, as I've experienced it in chemical refinery plants, hospitals, we're learning so much more. I know in the National Laboratories in Northern California, they do a lot of studying on human factors in different fields. And one of the key things is making sure that the rank and file people have some say, some input. So could you talk about that input and maybe Mr. Nover, you could follow up, particularly when it comes to new technology. So we want to acknowledge that new technology can make it safer, but we also want to work when it comes to human factors and not just drive costs down uh, with the excuse that it's going to make it safer, but actually have a full understanding that it is going to make it safer and it benefits the workers as well. Yeah. Um First of all, uh, Mr. Noble had mentioned that um, there's technology out there that allows you know, the carriers now to um, uh, address fatigue in the industry well. It, it really doesn't uh, address fatigue. There's no technology that addresses fatigue. Knowing when a person comes and goes to work is how you address fatigue. It's a common, common sense issue. Um, the, the, you know, and, move, and the railroad industry moves more and more hazardous material th throughout our nation. And they, we usually don't uh, get a regulation until they start moving serious thing or serious accidents happens. And, and you know, in the, in the near future and currently there is uh, um, some nuclear waste moving across uh, the United States. And, um, at present time, there's no regulation that protects the uh, um, employees from any nuclear waste. And there's a, it's a very simple device. I think we're all familiar with it. It's a dosimetry device that would measure uh, any nuclear waste. I mean, that's a common sense that we need to, to have in, in the industry if we're going to start moving these things. You know, the, the emergency escape breathing apparatus, I mean, that is another practical safety issue. I mean, sure, we didn't have an accident in 10 years, but, you know, God forbid that that happened, you know, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon instead of 2 o'clock in, in, um, uh, in, in the morning. But never mind. I mean, you can't forget the nine people that were in that factory. That destroyed that factory, destroyed their lives. I mean, you constantly... Technology is great, but it doesn't ever uh, replace human in interface, period. Thank you, Mr. Tillman. I'm going to let you respond, Mr. Nober, but I wanted to make another point, and you can respond to this as well, because my time is limited, and then Mr. Rorick and Mr. Rankin. So short-term versus long-term investment and prescriptive versus uh, performance-based. Eighteen years ago, in my local government supervisor district, I was a county supervisor, we had two explosions, killed five of my constituents. Um, I ca a comp competing refinery lobbyist called me and said, we do all the long-term investment, our competitors do not, they're getting higher return after tax profit in publicly traded companies. If you as a regulator don't bring them up to a higher standard, then we are going to have to come down to theirs. Um, that second incident was the largest Cal OSHA fine in the history of the state and resulted in a large, very large um, private right of action. So. The, w when we did a full facility audit, what came back was the auditor said it was the corporate culture that led to these deaths. So the struggle between long-term investment, short-term investment being successful in the marketplace, but also doing what is clearly the best thing in long-term investment. So that's my question, particularly to Mr. Rorick and Mr. Nober. And, and if you could follow on. I, yeah. I would. Um, first, I'd just like to clarify that for being, and maybe I misspoke earlier, that we think that technology can help reduce exposure for employees and improve safety. And obviously, it's our, it's our things like the long pool that we think and perhaps disagree with Mr. Tolman that can reduce fatigue. But fatigue is hard because it, there, there are minimum requirements, but what people do in their off time, it's not something that we can control. And so it's something that has to happen holistically. Now, you asked about how we sort of bring a culture of safety at BNSF. 
because obviously the human and human exposure and human choices mm -hmm. are the single most important thing to us. And we have a philosophy and a program called Approaching Others. And what we do is we train everybody in our railroad from the CEO on down on how to ensure and approach, feel feel enabled to approach others. If you see somebody take an unsafe act or bring themselves or put themselves in a, a situation where they're exposed to danger, to feel that you can go, you're empowered to go and talk to them and say, hey, you know, there's a safer way to do that. And, you know, we really are proud of our, of our approaching others. It's been going on for years because the ensuring that people don't put themselves in, a, in harm's way is job one of improving safety. And technology can help reduce exposure by not having people put themselves in compromising positions. And I will just say that it, over time, in terms of your investment question, you know, we are a believer that a safe operation is the best and the most efficient and the most profitable operation. And so our long-term improvements in safety are where we go. I, I can't imagine our company ever saying, hey, if you don't uh, reduce safety standards or bring them up. We're going to have to. We're going to have to reduce ours. We are about keeping our network, which is our business, operating efficiently and safely, and getting our people home safely every night. And I think we and Mr. Tolman agree on that. Uh, Congressman, if I may, um, just to, I'm not. Don't mean to go back and forth, but I just want to comment on the. Of course, you. you, you we can't control. Um, people's off time, but the railroad industry can control scheduled work, calling times, mandatory attendance policies. Those are the things you can control, window calling times, et cetera. I mean, there's a lot of things, and these are the things that the real labor and uh, management should be sitting down, working together, and not pretending that, that fatigue doesn't exist in the industry. There are some, BNSF has had some great pilot programs, but we're beyond pilot programs, enough pilot programs. We know by now that we, certain things address, can address fatigue in the industry. Let's get them working. Let's focus on them. These, this is what safety is about. Gentlemen's Thank time you. has expired. Uh, if you have, Mr. Rourke, if you have an additional 